I must say, for everything that YouTube and Instagram have tried to do to compete with TikTok, who would have thought that it would be TikTok itself that's driving me to Reels and Shorts? That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda, you're watching Swan Entertainment, and today we are talking about how TikTok is cannibalizing its own platform. And who knows how long it'll last for after this. TikTok really has been fairly resilient as a platform, truly. It, it has really blown through a lot of people's expectations or estimates for how long it would last, you know, with multiple hearings about, you know, should we ban the app in the United States? Reels, shorts, YouTube, Instagram. TikTok has really handled all of that in stride. But really what's going to nuke the platform, what's going to finally kill it, is its own greed. Yes, this is another TikTok shop video. But first let me tell you about the sponsor for today's video, Squarespace. That's right, Squarespace is back. The super powerful platform to help you get started building your website today. Whether you wanna launch a blog, have a place where you can sell your dog's paw print art, or start an all-in-one platform like I did with smallentertainment.com, Squarespace is the place to start. They have a ton of flexible website templates, and with Fluid Engine, you can customize any part of them. You can run email campaigns, set up your online store, start selling custom merch, or even just start showing off your work with portfolios and galleries. Go to squarespace.com to get started with your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash swanentertainment to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I swear I have zero desire to keep making those videos. I would rather the words TikTok shop literally leave my vocabulary and never come out of my mouth again or cross my consciousness. But TikTok is determined to not make that happen. I was hoping that the last video I made about TikTok shop would kind of be like the nail in the coffin when there was a sweep, a full on raid, if you will, of TikTok shop sellers selling uh, copied goods or fake goods, copycat goods, etc. They did like a bunch of strikes on everyone and a bunch of people lost their sites and lost their money in X, Y, and Z. I was hoping that that would be like the last time I had to make a video like this because I assumed that people would start learning. No, um, now people are selling um, energy drinks, vapes, still still selling copyrighted items that they're just drop shipping and then being like, oh, why get a Stanley Cup when you can get this nondescript metal tumbler that the real Stanley Cups allegedly have, well, they do have lead in them, okay? They admit to that themselves. So why would you assume that this off-brand one doesn't that you got for two cents? You know, like why? Some of you would not survive long in the apocalypse and this shows everything that all of you tell me to do for like how to see less TikTok shop videos. I did before you even figured it out. I blocked all the keywords. I started blocking people that I started routinely getting shown the videos from that I didn't wanna see. Hell, I tried to block product names even, okay, at a certain point. None of it works because now people are like, oh, well, I'll just do a paid promotion for my TikTok shop video or the um, wholesalers that these, uh, users are using to, you know, get the products to promote and get a commission for with the affiliate marketing. They are the ones that are, you know, promoting the pages and things like that, or like promoting those videos. So I really can't escape them. But now TikTok is infecting my feed with TikTok shop. I'm talking about the actual ads from TikTok themselves trying to promote TikTok shop. Before it was all the live, uh, their live event, their TikTok live event, their live, whatever it was called. I didn't participate. I didn't want to. I stream on Twitch, okay? <laughs> A lot of TikTok lives are very dystopian to me. It makes me uncomfortable, frankly. But they were heavily advertising their live event for a while. And apparently, like, they had a great turnout, something like 10 million users or something. That's a number I'm pulling out of my thin air, but you know, but they had a very good turnout for live streams, okay? Which is not surprising. They plug live streams like crazy. People have complained about their weird plugging of live streams and things like that for a while, okay? I feel like the ads have also gotten a little more egregious as far as advertising goes in general, but at least with the TikTok Live ads, like they were ads from, you know, users on TikTok Live talking about what they do and how going live on TikTok has changed their lives. I appreciate that. Those are fun for me. I don't really care to hear about how like Summer Fridays lippies have like changed your life. I don't really need to see those ads, okay? They're just not for me in particular. Um, and I knew it was the beginning of the end. Well, not the beginning of the end. You see, I watch quite a bit of like finance and business YouTube videos, um, just something I'm personally interested in. And a lot of the side hustle bros are talking about the reinvigoration of drop shipping because 
of TikTok shop. And I was like, oh gosh, I should have known this was coming and how they're seeing like a new boom in drop shipping and their courses being sold and things like that. And they're, we're pivoting. We just started adding in how you can sell on TikTok shop and get started with drop shipping on TikTok shop. Boom, $10,000 months or whatever it is that they're claiming these days. You know, I'm like, God, okay, great, great. Great, but then I started getting these ads. Now let me play you this ad from TikTok. If you're not monetizing your content with TikTok Shop, you're missing out. TikTok Shop allows you to browse products and add your favorites to your content, like tagging the serum you're using in your Get Ready With Me or dropping shoppable links into your live streams. And every time someone shops your content, you make a commission. I have received offers in emails mainly um, referencing my TikTok and trying to get me to promote their TikTok shop sold item, okay? It's usually something stupid, so I don't reply. I did one review of TikTok shop for a video, okay? I took all those down. I am no longer making any commissions on anything for TikTok shop, nor do I have any intention to. That's not what that platform is for. I wanna be able to make recommendations for products and things like that and have my audience, you know, make their own assumption of whether or not they want to go and buy from my links that are in my link tree or whatever, or they can go and look it up on themselves. But I don't personally want to go through TikTok, mainly because there's a lot of back and forth about, oh, who's making what money? Where's the money coming from? Where is the cut going to be? Is this an accurate cut representation of the money? Things like that. There's a lot of questions that I don't really like. And I just, once again, don't want to put all my eggs in one baskets as far as it comes to affiliate marketing goes. There's affiliate links in the description box of this video. I'm not inherently against affiliate marketing. I want to make that abundantly clear, but I do think there are smarter ways to go about it. And doing affiliate marketing entirely through your main platform, i.e. TikTok, I don't think is a smart bet. Personally, we saw this again with all these TikTokers who got their sites and pages taken down entirely because of the copyrighted things. Now they were doing, in most cases, shenanigans and they were selling copyrighted goods and pre-owned goods and X, Y, and Z. There's a reason I also don't use YouTube affiliates. Thing is, is YouTube does promote it regularly and they send me emails about it regularly, but I'm able to still scroll through the shorts feed without constantly being berated about how I have to buy this one hair care product from JBN. I don't get those, okay? Every once in a while, sure, I'll get a, something that shows like a tagged product or something, but that's really it. It hasn't been shoved in my face as far as how I consume the content. As a content creator, yes, they regularly send me messages telling me that I should be involved in YouTube shopping and how there's plenty of great deals for me and my audience. <laughs> I don't wanna do that, YouTube. I don't wanna do that, TikTok. I don't wanna give you guys a cut of my affiliate earnings, okay? Okay, that's money that I am earning through my audience for giving recommendations. You're gonna take a cut of my AdSense, you're gonna take a cut of my creator fund or the creativity beta program or whatever, or just like you get also a ton of engagement on your ads that you guys are also getting for yourselves through my audience engaging with my content on your platforms. Because as I said previously, these, con these platforms do not exist without the creators making the content for their users to watch and enjoy and share and consume and X, Y, and Z. That's where, again, the TikTok shop thing becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy of just gunk on the platform. Sure, they're using phrases like, oh, so, you're, so you can keep making content so your, average, your audience can enjoy. But most of the people that are doing TikTok shop affiliate selling are not full-time content creators. They might be, they might be creators, okay, that have just started like finding a new way to make more money from their content, okay? But a lot of them were just casual users who were like, wait a minute, I can make money from talking about this product and they'll send it to me for free because I got a discount code. Oh my gosh, wait, so I can get free products? And so now it's become the self-fulfilling cycle of just chum, like on websites, you know how there's like always like random filler websites at the bottom of like an article or something where it's like, oh, just come trying to get you on the platform, trying to get clicks to new platforms. And it's like just some insane clickbaity headline, things like that. That's basically what the whole TikTok for you page has become where everything is just an ad for something to keep you on the platform longer and hope you buy something. The trend that I'm seeing a lot with TikTok shop peddlers, if you will, um, at least on TikTok themselves, like the people being like, oh my gosh, you have to get this. Look what I got through TikTok shop and it's on sale right now in TikTok shop. Oh my God, guys, look at right below me. It's a sale for TikTok shop. This thing that I got for this touch, it's now for this much. <gasps> Those are people who are just 
now trying affiliate marketing. They have never tried affiliate marketing before, as far as I have seen. I'm sure there are a few scragglers in there who were like, oh my gosh, this is a new way for me to make more money. Yay, okay. So I, I question you know, your guys' familiarity with like how the cut system could work, how much you could be getting, things like that. Now, TikTok does do a fairly good job, I would say, from what I could see, of how much percentage you would be getting for promoting each product. Like if you, someone sells one, buys one thing, then you get 25% or something like that. It's usually not that high, but it's like, oh, for each sale, you make a dollar or something like that. I've talked about this before about like your whole existence being an infomercial. Do you want your entire online presence to be QVC versus making, you know, actual connections with your audience if you wanna be a content creator? I've talked about that, but a lot of you probably don't wanna be content creators. You're just like money, yay, fantastic, cool, do you. You're ruining the app, <laughs> but it's not your fault because you're just using a promoted link that TikTok is shoving in your face, okay? And TikTok is using it because it's making them money. They make a cut of every single sale, okay? And at any point they can decide you don't get that money. I do, and they take the money from you instead, okay? And they have every right to do that because you're operating on their platform. And this is another reason why I don't do affiliate marketing on the platform I'm making the most content on because you guys could yoink all of my things immediately here on YouTube. For example, there's a reason I have a Patreon and I don't do memberships on here. One day that's gonna change because I'm really not happy with Patreon lately. Just saying. I don't know. I don't think anyone is relying on the money from TikTok shop. I would really hope it's not. Now, apparently they have said that they wanna make it so that anytime you promote, mention, name, let's say have a, a product in the background of something, they want to link those products for sale. This is from NPR, written by Emma Klein. TikTok shop is taking on Amazon one viral video at a time. The breezy TikTok is captioned, I will never use another serum and shows a young woman holding a small tube and telling her followers how amazing it is. I've used every eyelash serum under the sun. About a year ago, I tried this and it has completely changed the game. It says wellness with lists in a post that has more than 370,000 likes. I can't talk. And there at the bottom of the screen for people using the app is the now ubiquitous orange shopping cart symbol. TikTok is surged into e-commerce space with TikTok shop feature, low users' feeds with options to buy directly from influencers without ever leaving the app. I think that's also the thing that I, I don't like the implication here because yes, there are influencers using uh, TikTok shop, but to say that all TikTok shop users are influencers, I don't think that's true because I do think there is a difference between influencers, content creators, and then the vast majority of TikTok shop users. Positioning itself as a kind of Amazon for the social media age, a full service integrated marketplace where people can buy things with only a couple taps of the screen. I feel like I'm just watching commercials. This is further down in the article. TikTok is unique in the amount of time it is able to hold people's attention. The numbers vary, but most estimates say the average user spends more than an hour scrolling daily. And the app has one of the youngest user bases of any major social media platform. Arelis Kaben Oberst is a marketing and e-commerce strategist who thinks TikTok has has the potential to disrupt industry. I think Amazon is going to have a competitor like they've never seen before, she told NPR. As a society, we want things yesterday. We have a condition with Amazon Prime and I think TikTok launched their TikTok shop kind of with the same expectations of its sellers. Yes, one of the things for TikTok shop that you have to do if you are a seller on TikTok shop is you have to provide tracking information within seven days of the order. You can have a delayed shipping time like for the drop shippers and things like that. But the tracking information, like for it actually, the shipment is actually started, you have to give them the um, tracking information within seven days. Student and content creator Maya McCormick says the marketplace has worsened her experience in that she has been spending less time scrolling as a result. I feel like I'm watching commercials, she said. McCormick said that the videos served her to her by the algorithm seemed changed noticeably after the shop feature launched. Instead of seeing videos that I liked or anything funny, it just turned out to be more and more advertisements of some things I needed, but a lot of times it was stuff I just didn't need, she said. And if a user decided to try to cash in on the new frontier, that user appeared to be rewarded with a boost in views, something McCormick thinks is intentional. I have a friend who actually started doing TikTok shop. She posts maybe three seconds of the product and gets 100,000 views in like an hour, which is insane. So I think it's really promoting that too, which is why we're seeing more and more of it. That I fully think is true. TikTok, like any social media platform, likes users that use their new favorite feature, okay? So obviously we see this as well with uh, shorts growth here on YouTube. If you 
promote shorts, if you use a lot of shorts, the likelihood of you growing and getting promoted more and recommended more is probably going to be higher versus someone who makes the same amount of, of videos, but in long form lately, as far as discoverability goes and things like that. Same goes with um, stickers on various Instagram stories and things like that, or uh, hashtags and certain hashtags because it's their hashtag versus a hashtag that someone just used or hashtag travel. Also, especially it helps if that content is making them money i.e. TikTok shop. That's not just advertisers, that is them directly seeing a cut of the video that you are making. Our frustration as a Gen Z user, mindful about consumption is not particularly common. For many young people online, shopping has become not just a hobby, but a distraction from the daily stress of life. I know a lot of people around me use it to kind of unwind, relax at the end of the day, or when they're taking a break. So there's a lot of thinking happening during that time, mostly because you're trying to distress and relax after a long day. Please stop falling into the TikTok shop trap. I've seen no less than 100 examples of people falling into this trap and losing their entire personal brand in the process. For the last five to six months since the TikTok shop has been out, creators with large followings have just been seeing dollar signs and turning their accounts into literal advertisements. Another very popular live stream trend is using live streaming in conjunction with TikTok shop so that you can basically do like live shopping and live promotion of different people's like, oh, I saw this in your shop, I wanna see it. Can you show me what it looks like on camera? Very popular with what I believe are counterfeit luxury goods. Mia Sato posted this here. Uh, TikTok is one step closer to being QVC. The company is building live streaming studios in cities, including Los Angeles. According to the information, influencers will then stream and sell products to their followers from the TikTok studios. TikTok's feature is increasingly looking like an endless digital shopping mall in an effort to cram more shopping links into content. The company is testing a feature that automatically identifies items in a video and prompts users, viewers to buy them. This is from January 30th. Uh, this is from John Porter. TikTok tests automatically identifies products in videos and offers purchase links. Months after the TikTok shop arrived in the US, the company is exploring ways to get e-commerce links into more videos. TikTok shop links could soon become a lot more common across the social media app. Oh, dear God. Bloomberg reports that the company is testing a new feature that automatically identifies products in the platform's videos before offering a link to find similar items on TikTok shop. A spokesperson for the company was not immediately available to respond to The Verge's request for comment, but it confirmed to Bloomberg that the feature is an early test. The latest reports on the experimental feature comes a few months after the TikTok shop launched in the US, which among other things allows creators to add links to products from their videos. Currently, Bloomberg notes that influencers and brands need to be approved by TikTok to tag products in videos, but the new feature has the potential to expand products links to all videos, representing a large expansion of TikTok's e-commerce feature as the platform targets 17.5 billion in sales in the US in 2024. And yet they pay out so little of that to creators, but that's just me. This wouldn't be the first time we've seen companies turn technology in an attempt to automatically identify products and offer links to purchase them. Competing social media platform Pinterest, for example, has a shopping recommendation feature that invites users to view similar products on certain posts. Shopping also has been pitched as a key use case for Google Lens and the company's more recent circle to search feature. Again, that's talking about TikTok shop. And I think bringing Pinterest up is a good point for that. Um, there are plugins that you actually can add to Pinterest now um, that literally blocks out all the ads. And in those instances, it's about half of the things when you pull up a search for Pinterest that is ads. They use very heavily on advertising, but that's Pinterest. That's I don't go there for video content. I go to TikTok for video content. I want my funny little quirky little videos. I want random things that I can do an investigation on for a YouTube video. I don't want to see the same lip gloss being promoted like crazy for two weeks because the, uh, oh, it's discounted and the conversion rate for the viewer, the creator is so great. So we're all gonna promote the same thing because we're a hive mind. Yay, I don't wanna see that. So I've been spending a lot of time on Reels and Reels has ads, they throw ads in there, okay? But they're usually, I'll give Reels this, they are getting much better at giving me content that I want. For the longest time, they were giving me pimple popping videos and like hoof cleaning videos. What are you trying to tell me, okay? I don't know what that was. I didn't like them, I didn't, they were just always there, okay? But now it's finally learning. Okay, it's giving me travel videos, food videos in Los Angeles, places that I wanna go to, fantastic. Random fashion videos, love that. Give me, I don't even care if they're funny on TikTok, on Reels, just give me something entertaining that's not pus coming out of someone's face. That's all I care about. Shorts I still spend barely any time on, but 
give them time, okay? Because the TikTok keeps doing this. If I can't even mention a product in my videos, because there are times where I mention like, oh yeah, I got this from here because someone asks or because I just feel like sharing because I like this item or something. If TikTok starts promoting that to find other items on TikTok shop, I'm gonna be pissed. I'm gonna literally just stop using TikTok. Who gets the commission in that case? Because they're going to that link because of something that I clicked. For example, like, is it, in, is it like the influencer shops on Amazon? So as so you don't know, influencer shops are something that you can apply for, okay? Or they ask you for, I had one and then they like reached out to me or whatever. But basically if you click into the link for the influencer shop, I believe it's 24 hours. Anything you buy after you click into Amazon from that link, or like, let's say you click in because of a product I recommended, and then you go and buy something else, you don't notice the difference, but I would still get a, like a percentage of like a commission from that. It could be five cents, it could be $20. It depends what you end up buying. That's one thing. Would it be like that where the person that you just randomly decided to throw, uh, look for other items, okay, onto their video to mess with their content, to mess with their user experience because the viewer is no longer gonna be like, oh yeah, like I like this person's video. Let me go check out their page. Maybe I'll go follow them. Maybe I'll see what other videos they have. No, now you're promoting something that takes them off of their content. Now it's, oh, look at similar items on TikTok shop. So now I'm clicking off of their page to go to TikTok shop. Sure, maybe I'll go back, but then TikTok also does this thing where sometimes when you go back, it resets the whole page the way that Twitter and Tumblr do because of background app refresh. So again, that creator that you led that little thing, they better be getting some form of compensation for that. It doesn't have to be the same thing as like whatever anyone's getting from TikTok shop, but it should be a percentage, a base percentage at least, if you're gonna slap a, oh, find similar items onto a video that I had no intention of making a commission off of. Because now you're using my video to promote a product that I have no affiliation with, or maybe even don't want affiliation with. What if I promote, like, let's say I have a Louis Vuitton bag in my video, like, let's say that, and then you lead them to a counterfeit bag that is being sold on, on TikTok shop. Because now am I on the hook for that? If Louis Vuitton is like, why is she promoting counterfeit goods? I'm not, I'm promoting a real bag, but your guys are, TikTok is now leading to promotion of fake goods on their platform because you guys do sell fake goods on your platform. I don't know who to tell you this. You guys did the, the crackdown. You did not get the luxury bag girlies because a bunch of them are fake luxury bags. I don't know what to tell you. Anyways, uh, TikTok is slowly killing itself. Oh yeah, UMG. Um, The UMG deal, UMG shot themselves in the foot and their artists in the foot, frankly. Uh, I don't think that that is a smart move on their part. People are always like, oh, TikTok, this was gonna, this is the death of TikTok, all this stuff. TikTok has barely seen a difference friends, they pivoted immediately. They started using Sims music in their edits. They started using a bunch of other music in their edits. Artists are the ones that I've seen routinely complain the most. Artists that are like, Universal Music Group discovered me because of my TikToks. And now all of my music is off of my TikToks but that's how they discovered me. So we'll see what ends up happening. I think this will lead to hopefully a rise in uh, newer artists. Again, we had a kind of a stagnation as far as like new artists being discovered via TikTok. I'm hoping this will see another boom of that because I do think that was a very good time on TikTok when we were seeing a lot of new innovative voices and sounds and songs on the platform. And we've just kind of seen that lag lately. I think this hurts artists more than anything else. Like the established artists that already were signed with Universal, it's gonna be very hard for them to have those moments again, especially because TikTok is a massive marketing tool. We've seen that repeatedly. I talked previously about how for a while, if not still, a lot of uh, labels were requiring their artists to try and get a viral moment for their songs before they released it. Like, oh, we need to make sure this song releases to like insane hype. So use TikTok to get insane hype. You know, it's very hard to do that when your music is literally not allowed on TikTok. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. I don't think that one harms TikTok as much as everyone like speculated that it was going to. Anyways, that's really it. If TikTok does continue to make this push and like constantly start putting ads on literally anything, like if I, if I'm just wearing an outfit and I'm talking about like oranges, the sky falling, okay, getting run over by a cyber truck. If I'm doing that and then they're like, hey, get this top, look for similar tops on TikTok shop, I'm gonna lose my goddamn mind. But that's just me, let me know. Comment down below what you think. Have you tried TikTok shop? Do you think that, have you seen these tests pop up anywhere? Do you think that this is going to be the end of TikTok shop? Have you yourself decided to spend less time on TikTok since the rise of TikTok shop and its absolute infestation of your For You page? Let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast. Reminder that Swan Entertainment is now available on Spotify. Reminder that Swan Entertainment is now also available on Twitch. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting on Patreon. If you also like to my Patreon, let us down below. Like to on social media, that'll be all up here. That's gonna be it, have a lovely day. Goodbye.
most bummer thing that I have been experiencing also on TikTok shop is creators who I followed, who I like really admired their content because they are funny or witty or gorgeous or whatever. And then their entire content has pivoted now to shilling for TikTok shop. Thank you, Oz, Eva, Ayana, Abby, Angel, Goth, Glynn, Palace, Pink, Jasmine, Lauren, Amy, Aslan, Medic, Rosie, Victor, Andrew, Tenzin, Sam, Mae West, Michael, Ryan, Adira, Nathan, Zwink, Literal, Jeffrey, Randy, QWERTY, Nomad, Thomas, Tasha, Donnie, Winter, Kenny, Robert, Cameron, Elliot.